Tonight on Joy News Prime, COVID-19 was a setback, but with determination, we will make it. That is President Ekofuado's Christmas message for Ghanaians. We're not there yet, but there's now a much greater belief that with discipline, determination and hard work, we will make it. Christmas Day may be an ordinary Friday for you because you may be broke, but for Apaka Abugri, getting one meal on this special day is real struggle. As a blind man, my priority is food and little drink. As for meat, it is a secondary matter. Our elders say a stranger is asked whether they have eaten, not whether they have taken meat. Also in this bulletin, Minority Leader in Parliament, Harun Idrisu, accuses government of misusing resources meant for the fight against COVID-19. They mismanage the COVID resources and that is what they used to campaign instead of using it to get school children back to school. We will hold them accountable to it. We will hold them accountable to every penny and peso I spend on COVID. And in business? Financial analyst Charles Mensah says employers must be a little bit careful when they are doling out bonuses to employees this Christmas season. I'm coming from the same port. Wow. So you decide. So you can split? Yeah, for the company. I'm talking about the company. Yeah. It's coming from the same company's port. What percentage have you allotted for staff costs or staff costs and staff welfare? My name is Aisha Brian. Joy News comes to you live from our studios in Koko Mlimle on digital address GA0992539 on Go TV channel 144 on DSTV channel 421 and on DTT because we're free to air. And Merry Christmas to you all. We begin with Christmas because it comes generally as one of the most memorable occasions for Christian families. But for Apaka Abugri in a village near Boko, the Christmas over the years has been all but pleasant. Join News' Mahmoud Mohammed Nuruddin visited his dilapidated residence in the Binduri district of the Upper East region and reports of a life in abject poverty. Sound mind, sane but blind. Apaka Apugri searches for his walking stick to do the usual at his wife's grave. Pray for her. Amalsum died about 16 years ago. Mr. Bogri returns to his room where he would sleep all day when Christians like him are celebrating the birth of Christ, a joyous occasion called Christmas. He has no place to go to celebrate the Christmas. Neither will anyone bring gifts to make life better for him, at least for one day. I always sit down and imagine how lively life would have been if people were around me, but there is no one in the house. If you people hadn't come, I would have been indoors until the sun rises before I come out. I will be here and if any passerby gives me money and I would then send someone to buy food for me. That brings Abugri's memory back to the time his wife was alive. But now he needs nothing but food to also celebrate. As a blind man, my priority is food and little drink. As for meat, it is a secondary matter. 
Our elders say a stranger is asked whether they have eaten, not whether they have taken meat. If you don't see food, how can you be asking for meat? He was born in the village of Tesnatenga at a time when births were not formally recorded. He does not know his age, but remembers he witnessed Nkrumah's regime. He has not had a child in his entire life. Nobody cares about him, and he may have to live in this dilapidated structure for the rest of his life. But Mr. Bugri knows that whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord and he would reward them for what they have done. That is the hope that rise in a Bugri before our team left his residence. A report by Mohammed Nuruddin. And back here in Accra, President Ekofordo says Ghana continues to be a beacon of democracy on the continent after conducting even uh, in the midst of a pandemic what he calls a transparent, free, fair, credible and safe general elections which have been recognized by both local and international observers. Delivering his Christmas message to Ghanaians, the president also urged the citizenry to remain determined, uh, determined hardworking and disciplined to propel the country despite the setback caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Fellow Ghanaians, on behalf of my wife Rebecca, my daughters, grandchildren, and members of my family, and on behalf of the government, I send best wishes of the season to you all as we celebrate Christmas. In a year filled with several highs and some lows, we're having for the first time in a long while to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in a subdued manner. We're having to make merry, albeit under restrictions, as a result of the global pandemic of COVID-19, which has not spared our shores. In spite of this, the epic story of Christmas provides us with an opportunity once again to affirm our faith, hope, and trust in Almighty God and His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, and to imbibe in us a deeper appreciation of a sense of hope in times of adversity and triumph over uncertainty. We in Ghana have good reason to be thankful to Almighty God for how far He has brought us. Our nation is united and at peace. We continue to be a beacon of democracy on the continent, having conducted, even in the midst of the pandemic, a transparent, free, fair, credible, and safe general election, which has been so adjudged by all impartial domestic and international observers. Our economy, is rebounding at a much faster rate than originally anticipated. We're ensuring that the basic elements of social justice, that is wide access to quality education and good health care, are being met. Food is affordable and is in abundance in our markets. And we are seeing to the transformation of the Ghanaian economy, which will bring in its wake jobs for the youth of our nation. We're not there yet, but there's now a much greater belief that with discipline, determination, and hard work, we will make it. And I assure you that our nation is being put on the path of progress and prosperity. So fellow Ghanaians, in all our celebrations and reflections on 2020, let us adhere to the COVID-19 protocol by respecting the enhanced hygiene and mask wearing protocols. It may be unconventional, especially at a time when we gather to make merry, but that is one way to ensure that we'll make it to the new year, healthy 
and alive. Let us prioritize the peace and national cohesion over personal gratification. Words from Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia as he admonishes Ghanaians to embrace peace after the 2020 elections. Speaking at the Victory Bible Church International after joining the assembly for Christmas service, Vice President Baumia noted it is not easy to lose an election, but it is always important to prioritize the peace of the country above one's own interests. Dr. Mahmoud Baumia referenced the 20, uh, 2008 and 2012 presidential election defeats he suffered with President Ekofuado, whilst adding that they took it in their stride. Just about two weeks ago, the Ghanaian spirit of peace was again tested when we went to the polls for the presidential elections. And thankfully, by the favor and mercies of the Lord Almighty, we have accomplished this task peacefully. Elections will usually come with winners and those who have not won. But the battle has always been the Lord. The battle has always been the Lord. So I ask myself, if the battle is the Lord, who is the victory for? The victory can only be for the Lord. It is not for us. Because the battle is His. So at the end of the day, we have finished the elections. We have given the victory to the Lord. And it is a victory for Ghana. At the end of the day, we have finished the elections. We have given the victory to the Lord. And it is a victory for Ghana. And we should be proud of that. It is not always easy when you lose an election. The president, Nana Kofuado, and myself have gone through painful moments of losing presidential elections. We lost one just by 40,000 votes. 40,000 in 2008. But we prioritized the peace and sanctity of our democracy and conceded. So I'm very much convinced that the Lord who granted us the, the will, power to prioritize national cohesion, peace and tranquility over personal gratification is capable and will do the same today for us. On his part, presiding bishop of the Victory Bible Church International, Bishop Taki Aboy, appealed to politicians and political parties to have goodwill for the people. Will among the politicians of Ghana. Well, you you clap your hands there. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. <laughs> because we are all one people. If we say any problem, I so peace on earth, and then goodwill. When you have goodwill towards somebody, he will offend you. He will, whatever it is, he will offend you. Because we are on the other side of the Garden of Eden. By all means, there will be tension. If he said Eden even identical identical twins, they have tension. So, it is, this is the season that we want to appeal to all Ghanaians. We want to appeal to all politicians. All political parties. Let us have good will. Because it's a Christmas season. And I pray that God will help us. That we will be able to sing glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace. This time, the world is getting smaller. Because of internet, and I'm internet. Because of phone, and phones, technology, and I have phone in the. in the same way, the same kind of also. Coronavirus came somewhere, somewhere. Coronavirus, free baby, baby, bye. We were hearing it. Yeah, near yeah, it. But we felt we were far away. The idea is say you were chichi chichi. No, no, you were deceiving us. Yeah, yeah, that I am. 
And so to come in this bulletin, minority leader in parliament, Haruna Idrisu, accuses government of misusing resources meant for the fight against COVID-19. They mismanage the COVID resources, and that is what they used to campaign instead of using it to get school children back to school. We will hold them accountable to it. We will hold them accountable to every penny and peso I spend on COVID. There is more for return. Welcome back to Joy News Prime. Now to the rest of our stories. Minority leader in Parliament, Harun Idris, is accusing government of misusing resources meant for fight against COVID-19. He claims the government used the money to campaign instead of protecting Ghanaian children. Mr. Idris, in an interview with Joy News, served notice the next parliament will not let the issue rest. He says President Okofado has failed in the fight against corruption. Ghanaians, Ghanaians will even know where, where is coming. They mismanage the COVID resources, and that is what they use to campaign. Instead of using it to get school children back to school, we will hold them accountable to it. We will hold them accountable to every penny and peso I spend on COVID. We're not going to accept wholesale. I spend two sixty or one billion. We will ask for fine detail, and I think that. Uh, Nana Dudanko has lost the moral right, the moral strength to even talk about corruption, let alone talk about he's going to fight it within, within, within. So, so you can expect that kind of opposition to within, continue going into the administration. You can expect the minority he's not, the, able, the he's not able to make it a high risk activity. And we are uh, grudgingly disappointed uh, about his uh, conduct on improving governance and uh, uh, generally. I mean, if, if this had happened anywhere in Europe, that would pass as a vote of no confidence on an incumbent government. I would go and check that Would you think the Ghanaian populace eventually did? That's as far what as they, they did. The That's what they did. And uh, we should hold together the unity and peace of uh, the country. I'm Members of Parliament are confident the high attrition rate in the House will not significantly impact the work of the next Parliament. As many as 122 MPs out of the 275 are not returning. Outgoing MP from Priso and Chairman of Parliament's Defence and Interior Committee, Seti Champon, believes the new ones will live up to expectation. I entered Parliament with no public knowledge. I, I was a private practitioner. I was working in private practice. But today I'm speaking public conversation. I only encourage the new entrants and I know they are continuing members. The continuing members outnumber the new entrants. So certainly the bonding will help pass knowledge on to those who have just joined. As you know, Parliament is an institution of its own. You come from every sector or any sector into Parliament, you must submit yourself to learn the rules in Parliament and then you master it as you go. That's why we say we are masters of our own rules. You have to be here to practice, go through the processes and the procedure and master it and be a master of the rules. So this is the only way we can do it. I see an interesting time for this country. Ghana is with the entire beneficiary. There's going to be consensus building. This is the period that I know there will be a lot of consensus building. But yes, we've lost. Yeah, but you, you'll admit that that may end up impacting things negatively, don't you? As in losing, at my last count, 112 sitting MPs going into the next one. It, de it depends on how leadership molds the house. Mind you, any commencement of a new parliament, we do what is called orientation. It is an institution that has its own way of inculcating into its members what its processes, what its culture is. And I definitely understand the temperature we are in, leadership vis-a-vis -vis the parliamentary service will tailor a proper program for the incoming members and the continual members. And this will benefit Ghana eventually. The next parliament will have 137 NPP MPs and 137 NDC MPs with one independent MP. Outgoing MP for Kumbungu, Ras Mubarak, believes consensus building will be the order of the day in the next parliament. 
It's officially a hung parliament. It is officially a hung parliament, even though we are hoping that we would uh, clash the Tachiman South seats to give us a majority in parliament. But um, obviously, consensus would have to be built, as we have seen in this particular legislation. Obviously, um, uh, members of, of the House would have to reach across the aisle to each other and build consensus and build bridges. bridges on the most important things for, for, for the country. But I think it's, very, it's, very, it's going to be a very exciting parliament. But it also takes away the issue of uh, majority ha gets its way. Currently, with a hung parliament, there's nobody who is majority or minority. We are all you know, equal, 137, 137, as announced by the Electoral Commission. If, if the Fomina MP sits with them, as in the NPP, at any given, they have that extra At any given time, time, you can't guarantee that all government ministers would be in the House to do government business. I mean, Parliament or leadership could decide to schedule a particular date for votes on key things on the floor. But you can't guarantee that somebody would not fall ill you can't guarantee that a minister would not be stuck outside of the country. As in the case of the Honorable Akutose, you know, during COVID, who got, who got stuck um, in the it US. It could happen to both sides. And could, and could not fly back it, it could happen to both the country. It could, it could happen to both sides. But the interesting thing is that you would going to have to need a very effective whip in the eighth parliament to ensure that everybody is there to deliver the votes. And still to come in the bulletin, uh, financial consultants kick against borrowing to pay workers bonus. It's all coming from the same port. Wow. So you decide. So you can split. Yeah, for the company. I'm talking about the company. Yeah. It's coming from the same company's port. What percentage have you allotted for staff costs or staff costs and staff welfare? Details when Charles Aite brings you this. Good evening to you. It's time for business. I'm Charles Aitip. A financial consultant, Charles Mensa, is kicking against borrowing to pay workers a bonus during this Christmas season. It has now become a tradition that companies pay workers end-of-year bonuses, especially during this festive season. But Charles Mensa, however, argues that this must go along with some strict conditions. It's all coming from the same port. Wow. So you decide. So you can split. Yeah, for the company. I'm talking about the company. Yeah. It's coming for the same company's port. What percentage have you allotted for staff costs or staff costs and staff welfare out of your company expenses? So if this is what is in the port, you decide to use 90% to pay fiscal salary to people and then the 10% for welfare, so be it. So the accountants and the management of companies usually do the mix themselves. So it's kind of the same, it's the same point. Mm. It's the same so point. it's not a mix of either or? No, 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 it's the same point. So if you take this, I pay 90% salary. Even those who are doing the 13th month, that's how we started. So the full 12 month salary that we're getting is so when the, the, the employee insists that they get a 13 month salary. So the same pot, they divide by 13 instead of 12. So your base salary will go down. Mm. So it's not, because if, if, if 12,000 and I divide by 12, I'm giving 1,000. Yeah. If I divide by 13, I'm giving you less than 1,000, maybe eight, 900 or something. So I'm paying you 900. I've negotiated with you hard. And now in addition to that, so I'll pay you 13 month. When you add them up, it's the same 12,000. Mm. So it's the same pot, mm. but people don't, yes, yeah, we're happy to receive 13th month. It's because the company have realized that you always come back for the 13th month. So, so, that's where so, so let, me get, sure let, let me get some understanding here, Mr. Mensa. So what is the rationale? Is it a separate salary altogether, the next month of that advance payment, or when I hear this 13th month salary? No, what is, is it? How is it worked out for It me? is your staff cost. Yeah. Next month, sir. Uh, yes, you know, it's your staff cost for one year. How much is due to be paid to George? 12,000 CDs for the whole year, which means that George gets 1,000 CDs every month. That's my projection. Mm. At the last uh, uh, discussion with George, he raised the point about 13th month. Okay, it makes sense. So, when I'm doing calculation as a company's accountant or management accountant, I would take 
let's say next year we intend to increase worker salary by 20 percent okay so 20 percent of 12,000 gives me 14,000 for 400 so instead of dividing 14,400 by 12 to give me the monthly salary, I would divide by 13. Mm. So I come with you and say, George, this is how much I'm going to pay you. However, because you did so well, now I'm going to pay you 13th month. Well, as we celebrate Christmas, players in the banking space are, have been sharing their Christmas wishes with you, our viewers. Let's start with Edward Nati Botry, the chief executive, the chief finance officer for Ecobank Anglicold West Africa, after which we hear from the managing director of Bank of Africa, Kobi Anda, as well as his deputy. 2020 has been a rather interesting year. Um, the year began just like any other year, but obviously it quickly changed into a rather strange year. Um, there's been ups, there's been downs. Um, along the journey, um, your bank has found ways to be able to support you um, in, in various areas. We do know that we wouldn't have come this far without your support and, and without your custom. So so on, on, on this occasion, we, we, we are pleased to really wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We at Bank of Africa wish our clients, your clients, all uh, Ghanaians, a very happy holiday season, a happy New Year, Merry Christmas. Uh, this year, 2020 has been tough on all of us. Uh, let's all pray and have faith that next year will bring more joy, more peace. Um, to our dear country, Ghana. Is there anything nice you want to say to Ghanaians as they celebrate Christmas? Yeah, I, I wish uh, to uh, my fellow uh, Ghanaians happy, a uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Um, I've been enjoying living in Ghana uh, with such a very nice people and um, I'm, I'm saying it from the bottom of my heart. Uh, it's really a nice country to be in. Thanks for staying with us here on Joy News Prime Time to bring you sports. My name is Hans Mensa, and the former vice president of the Ghana Football Association, Georgia Free, wants the leadership of the football governing body to give Black Stars coach Siki Akono the support to succeed. According to him, some actions of the association portrays zero support for the former Kumase Asante Kodoko coach. Siki Akono was hired to replace Kwesi Apia following the decision of the executive council to dissolve the technical teams of all national teams. The former Asante Ikotako head coach have had 50% success in his career as a technical head of the senior national team. Many have alleged that the leadership of the Ghana Football Association is forcing players on the former House of Oak Gaffa, former vice president of the Ghana Football Association, George Afri, who also doubled as Black Stars Management Committee chairman, have called on the Ghana Football Association to give him the free hand and support to work. I was happy when C.K. Akono was appointed um, because then another Ghanaian coach took, takes over from Kwesiapia. That was a good thing. It's a plus. Of course, it means that we are trying to help, uh, help one of our own. I had the chance to travel with C.K. Akono uh, when Kotoko played Zesco United. The night after the game, I sat in the dining ro room with him. I had then done my own analysis of the Kotoko team that plays Zesco. So I sat with him and trust me, Everything that I believe in, everything that I, I, I had put together about the Kotoko team, the coach was thinking the same. So when I came back, I granted an interview at Kotoko International Airport. And I said that CK must be given the chance to continue his job because he was doing a very good job. Now, unfortunately, he was appointed a black star coach, somebody who deputized for Kwesi Apia. And so what I want to tell the FA, that they should leave the man to work. Honestly, everybody knows that Ked had had a chance to work with uh, CK at a point he was even managing him. So if fortunately one of his own has been appointed as the head coach of the Black Stars, we need to give him all the needed support. You see, you, you cannot send somebody out there to go and perform a duty and you expect him to do well or you expect him to bring you the results. If you don't give him the needed support... But let's do some athletics now. And Secretary General of the Ghana Athletics Association, Bawa Fuseni, has described 2020 as a difficult year for the sport, but he's hopeful of a better 2021. The year has been challenging, uh, most especially because of this COVID-19 case. <clears throat> We're not able to do a lot of our programs 
and uh, the year started good. We had few 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 sponsorship and we were able to do our first competition at the Sipon Sports Stadium. We were planning to continue with our uh, programs within the year, but COVID came and we had to abide by government rules and regulation in terms of COVID protocols. And thankfully, <coughs> the year is also ending well because we've started a lot of courses. Currently, there's one ongoing course at Damongo to train the newly created regions, coaches in all the new created regions. So I, I would say it was interesting year. The beginning was good. The middle and the later, the larger part of the year was wasn't too good, but the ending looked very good too. So it's a mix mix year, ending good, starting good, but the larger part of it wasn't too good. And that's it for sports. There is more on myjoyonline.com forward slash sports. I'm Hans Mengsando. Welcome back to Journey. It's prime time now for Showbiz. Becky is here. Hi. Merry partner. Christmas, Aisha. Look How at me. You? I can see that. Celebrating. All in the mood. Aisha, let me, let me say hello to uh, my auntie and my mommy. They are currently in the makeup room right now. They are mm. watching. They love okay. uh, the show. Oh, so, Merry Christmas to Merry you, Christmas Mom and you. sis. We and, love you. Uh, do you have any Christmas memories, Aisha? Christmas memories. I mean, I don't celebrate Christmas. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm a Muslim, you but know. That. You work with I, Christians. I, I work with Christians, so yes. Um, I'm always around you guys. Mm. And uh, I mean, once. I gave you a present. Oh, you did? Yesterday. Yesterday, right? You forgot. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, we hit the street to ask, you know, a few people. Uh, their Christmas memories, mm. the fun, their fondest Christmas memories. And okay. Here's what we came up. Christmas is a reflection of God's love to mankind and it has been celebrated over the years by most of the Christians across the world. Correct me if I'm mistaken, but most people have memorable celebrations of Christmas. Whether poor, rich, young or old, Christmas brings good tidings. So, what's your fondest Christmas memory? Well, growing up, mostly we go to parties with our parents. Enjoy, as kids, we enjoy going to parties and then having fun. So that's it. And then having family gatherings, like I'll be having tomorrow too. We hardly get uh, Coke or any Fanta to drink. It's hardly even purchasing one. Actually, where, where, where did the money? So once in a year, in Christmas like this, we, we have access to a cool bottle of mineral which is shared uh, by five guys one bottle five guys sharing it i remember we used to perm our hair yeah. <laughs> i have to run away from home and go and perm my hair when i come back my father will be very angry at me sometimes he will use scissors to cut it then i'll, I'll be crying <laughs> All right, so that's it. It's okay. I did my best. <laughs> Some people have been sharing their expectations for 2021. We can't wait for 2021. Uh, let's see what people are uh, expecting. 2021, more I music, people are going to go crazy. It's a promise. Oh, yeah, I promise. Oh, that one yeah. is a promise. People, people are going to go crazy. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I do. I do. Le next year is going to be crazy. I mean, um, like I said, again, I had a lot of plans for the album to come out this year for whatever, whatever. But because it's been so crazy, we haven't been able to do any of that. So make, make you guys take this one for now. Next year is going to be crazy. We are going to keep working, keep recording, keep releasing good music, good content for the fans. And so we are still working back to back. Any releases come 2021? Yes, a lot, a whole lot, because I've been going to the studio a lot, a lot more. But hopefully 2021 will be different for we all, hopefully, yeah. More bangers. I'm dropping an album in 2021 and trust me, more bangers. Just share my stuff and promote my stuff. That's all I want from you guys, yeah.
All right, so those were some of your favorite celebrities. And that'll um, be it for sure. Thank you so course, much, Becky. Time. Merry Christmas, but everybody. Stay, but stay, stay on. Um, that'll be it for the bulletin tonight. My name is Aisha Prime. Many thanks for watching. And on behalf of the rest of the production team, we say what? Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. We love you. We love you. Mwah. Mwah. Mwah.